just in case there was... <laughs> Good evening and welcome everybody to a new tutorial for TGIB and <laughs> because it is w today we want to make a very special tutorial because it is Easter and because this is the 10th tutorial or speed build video tutorial thing already and um Today I want to sh show you how to make a candle. And um, even though making the candle is not all that complicated, it requires three steps. First is to make the actual candle. The second is to create a candle flame texture. And the third is to make a particle script that will um, lit the candle. And um, explaining all these steps takes a little bit longer. So I can't give any guarantee if that today's tutorial is really speedy, but it'll still be a tutorial. Um, music today is from Trust No One. I forgot the name again. Lights out. There we go. And we start by going to Blender and creating our candle. Um, choosing the mesh type for the candle isn't really hard because um, a candle is a cylinder. So we add mesh, sculpt mesh and add a cylinder, subsurface off. And uh, there we have our lovely cylinder down to level of detail 1 to see how it looks. And um, first we want to close the edges. To do that you hold down the Alt key, right click on an, e on an edge to select the whole circle and then press the S key to scale it and the zero to scale it to zero. Then on return and you have closed one edge. The top edge is a little bit depleted into the candle because that's I think how candles look. The bottom we do the same and up so it's flat. Very good. This is the basic shape of our candle. Now on one edge, let's say on this one, there is a little dent in it where wax wax will grid out of. Consequently, underneath here, there's going to be a puddle of wax. basic shape. We save this to have something to fall back onto. I've already got a candle blend because I started this tutorial once and somewhere in between ran into a dead end. So this is the first try, the second try actually. Okay, now we add a new level of detail. Maybe 
Some of the various scenes manually. Sit down on the ground, looking at people, playing on a smeary go round. Going round and round, I've watched them leave the lives. I stay safe and sound. Speaking of candles, have you ever watched Rod Gilbert's great uh, stand-up comedy on Power of a Million Candles? Uh, I think I'll provide a link to that on the end of this people tutorial. It's hilarious. It's a he's a great com uh, comedian from Wales. And uh, you can find a lot of his stand-up comedy stuff on YouTube. But this is completely unrelated to our candle. Where we just will add another level of detail.
I think this is a good opportunity to show you another tool in Blender. This is the Sculpt tool. Um, the only thing it, is, it shares with the Sculpt is the name and the concept, because with the Sculpt tool you pressing N opens the properties window. You can um, paint onto the sculpt map in 3D. Um, you can smooth it, pinch it, inflate, deflate, uh, grab part of it, uh, layer it, flatten it, and both. Uh, you can change the size of the tool and the strength. So let's inflate this here to Sculpt tool, we go back to edit mode. And what our candle lacks still is a mm, cord.
There we go. This is our candle. Um, first we create the scalp map. Create a shadow map for this. Inclusion onto the candle. Actually, I want to bake that in level of detail three. Oh well, actually. It shouldn't make all that much difference. But let's do it again. There we go. What I'm doing right now is finding a good shadow texture. Let's try this once more. For this. And, um, this one looks rather neat. Okay, um, let's go in world <clears throat> and play a little with our candle. I've got a 
Esto. Depending on which of the shadow maps we use, this is how our candle looks. I'm using this one. Actually, I will modify this one later on a little bit more, but I think it makes for a better shadow. Now, this is an okay candle. It just doesn't burn. To make a candle burn, actually, can you see that? If you zoom out far, this is level of detail too. And this is level of detail one. This is why it's so important to keep the levels of detail in mind, because some things will only be seen at a certain level of detail. For example, the cam candle thread here. Anyway, um, to simulate a flame, we will need particles. Now, the way particles work they will always be emitted from the center of a prim. So, if we script this candle so it will emit particles, they will emit from here. This is not where the flame is located in a regular candle. Uh, usually, uh, we want to emit the, the, the flame from the top. There are two solutions to this. The uh, quick and dirty approach is to make a separate prim that's transparent just to emit the um, particles and move it up here and link the two. That works and it's just another prim more, so no harm done, right? But I want to show you a different approach because we can make the sculpt so that it will only occupy half of this um, bounding box. If you... A, a sculpt usually has a bounding box around its um, perimeters and um, you can... going back to Blender... Um, if you render the bake the, 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 the sculpt mesh, you can see the color range adjustment on the right. Usually they go from 0 to 255, so they occupy all values of the color range. This is red, green and blue. If you, however, restrict that color range, for example, only to half of it, um, it would be 100 and, no, 125. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now I got the wrong. Sometimes Blender is not the most intuitive tool. So let me change this. Here we see that the candle is suddenly only half as big. This is because it only occupies half of the bounding box. And this also means that the center of this um, sculpt is suddenly at the top of the sculpt because 
the bounding box is double as large. We just restricted the blue color range from previously 0 to 255 to 0 to 225, so half of the, the bounding box is unoccupied, which effectively moves the candle downwards. This is no problem because you can still stretch it, right? Um, but it is important for our particle, which neatly moves us to the next part of this tutorial, making the flame. I'm making all of my textures in Filter Forge, and um, the way I remember, there is a very neat flame texture that's called Candlelight. There we are. And um, as you can see, it's a nice candle flame. The only problem with this is that the background is black. And that's just not what we want. So let's first edit this filter so it will get rid of. black background. Oh, this is actually pretty easy because it's already implemented. So, now we have a transparent background. Um, Save this image as miscellaneous. Flame. And because it's a transparent texture, we need to save it as a TIFF because this includes transparency. But sadly, because TIFFs cannot be imported by a second live viewer, we have to convert it um, miscellaneous to a PNG. Textures. There we have our flame, and now all we need is a script to script the particles. Now the number one resources for scripts in Second Life is the Particle Lab of Jopsy Pendragon in Second Life. Um, let me really quickly show you. It's an amazing resource for scripts uh, for particles. So basically, if you run through it, you will learn everything you ever need to know about how particles work and how to script them.
particle lab is on the region teal, like the color. Takes a while until it rises. And you will have to take the hot air balloon to take you to the particle lab. Um, you can see the different parameters that particles need um, to, for, the, for the scripting language to know how they are to behave. A great off-world resource um, to make a particle script is the Particles LSL Generator. Um, you can find this on particles-lsl-generator.bashora.com um, which will, after you enter it, all the parameters, create the script for you. We arrived at the particle lab. Um, you can see the different stations here. And um, also there are neat sandboxes around where you can just try what you learned. Um, but this is something very extensive and not necessary for what we have in mind right now. So let's use the particle generator. Function name, uh, let's call this flame. The texture, here you enter the user ID or the texture name. If you enter the texture name, the texture needs to be in the object inventory. So, our texture will be called flame. Flame. Uh, let's make it glowing. And interpolate color means that the basically this is like coloring a texture on a second life uh, uh, prim. Um, for example, if I wanted to make this color, this candle purple, and this is what interpolate color would do with the flame um, texture. Uh, we we don't want that. I mean, the flame looks good as it is. Alpha start and end is the transparency. Um, the uh, that will start and end. Um, I think it's good to end. Zero. And interpolate scale means you can make um, the scale, the initial scale, smaller and um, the end scale larger, the particles will move. So over time when they move, they can change their parameters. They can change their alpha, they can change their scale, and they can change the color. Here you have to enter how long the particle will live. A particle dies because they will get generated all the time. They also need to die um, after a certain amount of time. Um, the time is set in seconds, uh, default is one, let's leave it at that. And then the pattern of the particle. Um, de defines where the particle will be emitted. Um, explode sends them in all directions. Drop, well, lets them drop. An angle cone uh, will only emit them into, you know, to a different angle, to, to a certain angle. 
and the angle cone empty sends them in all directions except this angle and uh, angle itself uses angle to make flat wedges so it will only will not be sent into a cone but into a flat um, direction explode is fine actually we want to want the particles to stay in place but we will define that uh, further down speed will be zero so they will stay in place acceleration zero rotation also zero they will not follow any source you can set particles to follow a certain source they will not follow uh, a velocity they can yeah let's let's make them influenced by the wind they will not bounce off surfaces and they will not fly towards a target if you want them to be to fly towards the target, you have to enter the um, the parameter, either the object itself or the object owner or an a agent's UUID. Then you have to set how fast car particles have to be generated um, in seconds and how many of them are getting generated every burst. Let's set the rate to 1 and only 2. And then you click on generate script and there you have it. And then you can just copy make a new script put this in to your candle Flames are very small right now, so let's make them larger. The size of the, is the start scale. As you can see, it's still not completely in the center. Um, so what we need to do is make it still a little bit smaller and also move this a little bit to the front. Um, this is the green scale. Let's go back to our render object and render this once more. Scale of the, the green one will be two hundred. Save it as candle three.
this is almost perfect. It's, no, I made it a little bit too small. So, once more with feeling. Green was 200. Blue was... Ten. There we go. It kind of looks a bit squished now, but you can stretch it. As you see, the flame stays in place. It's very nice because this is what we wanted. Also, let's make it larger. There we go, there we have our candle. This was it for today. Um, our special Easter candle flame edition of the TGIV uh, speed build tutorials. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful and I'll see you around, watch Rod Gilbert's performance on YouTube at youtube.com Looking for Rod Gilbert And um, enjoy your candles, thank you very much